lesson number seven of 10 of the Power BI Beginners Training Course. So with no further ado, let's dive straight in to what we're going to show you today about publishing and sharing Power BI reports. So we have an ongoing Power BI file, which is available for everyone at our GitHub site. Links are in the description below and hopefully on the chat. If they're out there, hopefully Conrad, um, you know the GitHub link, don't you? That's where you can find yes. both the PBIX file, the Power BI desktop file, and the course slides. They're all over at that um, Power BI GitHub, at the GitHub portal. I didn't have that ready actually, but I'll get it ready now. It's over here, Power BI week 10. There's this, there's the, there it is. So with no further, ado, no further ado, let's get into our Power BI X file and see how we can share it. So I'm gonna open Power BI desktop. Here is the file that we've been working on. It's called the executive summary. We started it in week one and it's got lots of Power BI reports in there. And as of last week, we were just last week six, we were looking at the various filters, syncing slices, tool tips, and there are all the different tabs within the report going across the bottom. So I've simply added a simple, a single page and I've right clicked the tab name and I've renamed it just to page lesson number seven. Yeah, such that then any slides and any pages that I add to this Power BI report will be added to the right of here. So when you have a Power BI report, you, um, you publish, you come into the menu, home menu, across the ribbon, click publish. And when you click publish, it automatically asks you to save your file. So you will be saving, it's a save, you'll be saving over the existing version of your file. Then it asks you where you wish to publish the file to, and you have to choose a workspace and you will only see the workspaces that you are members of. Now we all have um, been given access to a workspace called DA100. And if you have been participating and requested a Waterbyte email, you should now hopefully have access to that. If at any point you don't, please put it in the chat and we'll try and make sure that you do get access to this workspace. So you select the workspace and then you simply clicked select and Power BI automatically takes a copy of the file that you have locally on your Power BI desktop and publishes that file up into the cloud, into the Power BI service. And then you will get a notification that the report has been published successfully. And if you wished, you could simply click this link, the first link, and it would take you straight to that report in the Power BI cloud, the Power BI service. And just whilst we're here, please do observe, there is another link called Quick Get Quick Insights. Now, it's not as quick as it might imply that Get Quick Insights, but if you do click that, what will happen, it will, Power BI will create a report based on your data set. It'll create a separate report for you in the Power BI service. So let's go over to the Power BI service. So I'm just gonna simply click this link and it will open up in my browser, powerbi.com. The URL is always app.powerbi.com. When you go to powerbi.com, having clicked that link, I landed on that report, but hey, look at that, the page is empty. Now, why is that page empty? Because if you see, if you noticed this page, this report, this PBIX report, when I published it, I was on that last tab called lesson seven and had no, and there was no visuals on that report in the Power BI desktop. So remember, when you publish a report from Power BI desktop, ensure that you publish when you are on the page that you wish the end user to automatically land on when they open the report. Power BI will not always open on page one, page two, page three. Yep, it opens on the page that you publish and save the report on. So I'm gonna go back to Power BI Desktop. I'm gonna repeat that process. And instead of save, publishing it on that page, lesson seven, I'm gonna to go to this page called the filter pane where I've got a nice little report and then I'm going to publish it. 
And when you republish a report to the same workspace, please observe that you will always get a warning that pops up saying you're about to replace this data set. So what that is telling you is that you are saving over the existing report and data set in the Power BI cloud. And that will always appear because every time you republish the same file with the same name, you're obviously overwriting it. There is no option but to overwrite it. And thus you will always get this warning, hey, replace this data set. It would actually look better if it said, replace this report and data set, but it states, replace this data set. So you simply have to click the replace button and it will overwrite that existing PBIX file in the cloud. And I repeat, it's now saving it in the cloud with the report defaulting to page that I saved it on with this tab called L6 dash filter pane. So we'll give it two seconds to publish. It's already done that. I could simply once again, click this link, but I'm not gonna do that this time round. I'm gonna prove to you that it does open on L6 filter pane tab, because I'm gonna go over to my browser. And when I'm in my browser, I'm gonna go to the workspace. I can see that the report L7 has just been recently published because it's got three little dashes into the top left-hand corner of it. Hopefully you can see those three little dashes. That means it's a new Power BI report recently published to the workspace. I am in the content section of the Power BI service, which will show me all the reports. I know they are reports because they've got the blue icon with the bar chart on. I'm gonna click the L7 report, which we know was just published here. And if you look at the date, you can see it was published at 5.08 on the 1st of March, 2021. I'm just gonna click the report. And now, hey presto, it should open on that page, L6. <laughs> This is life is terrible. Let me, that's because I didn't clear my cache. Let me try that again. Sorry. I'm now going to press F5, function and F5 to clear my cache because your browser caches information. You can press function and F5 to clear your cache. And now I'm going to click L7 and open the report. And all going well, it should have done and it should have op re opened on the L6 filter pane. For some reason it didn't. Don't worry, yours will. It might just take a second to publish into the cloud that update. Best is to get it right first time round. Once you've published your report into the cloud, this is in living inside the workspace where I've published it to. And if we were working with our colleagues, our other Power BI developers, we would all be able to see this report inside the workspace. But when we work in the enterprise, our ultimate objective is to share this report with other business users. So we might have a hundred business users who want to see this report. Not, those business users are not Power BI developers. They will not be inside this workspace as members of the workspace. There's only you and me who are the Power BI developers who are members of this workspace. So somehow we have to get this report out to those business users. And hey presto, across the menu, we have the option to share this report. So I click the drop down marrow next to share. And the most obvious way of sharing this report is to click share and then report. So you share this report and then you get a dialogue that opens up on the right hand side where you can share the report and you can enter different people's emails across the organization who you wish to share the report with. So I'm good, for example, I could share the report with Conrad. I could share the report with a user group, an Office 365 user group. Maybe I've got a distribution list. Here's one, for example, called the Power BI internal developers. So you could share it to individuals or user groups. And you can also, if you wish, share to external people. So I have my Gmail account, so I'm gonna share it to my Gmail account. Now, when I share it, I can here, I can share to multiple users, 
multiple um, um, security groups. So I've got also my Gmail. And when I type in the Gmail, it, I get a notification saying one or more of the email addresses with the following domains are outside your organization, the gmail.com. That's not a problem. I can share a report with someone outside the organization. As long as that person has the necessary licensing, they will be able to view that report. They will get an email because you can see below that yellow box no notification, there are three checkboxes. And the first checkbox says, allow recipients to share report. Second says, allow recipients to build content on the data set that this report's based on. And the third option is send an email notification. So what I tend to do is I deselect the first option and the second option because I don't want my end users to be able to share this information to other people. I want to be in control who has access to my report. So I deselect those first two options. I leave the third option selected saying send an email notification and I would then click share. Everyone on this who I've added would then receive an email. Just before I click share, I would also like to point out there is a URL link that at any point in time, if you wished, you could also share that URL link with the person so that they could see the report from that URL link. So at that point, I've added the people, the email addresses, I click share, and automatically Power BI will now send out an email to all those people saying they've had that report shared with them. But let's just go back there and look at that sharing options again. Because when I go to share and report, there's also another menu option on the right-hand side called access. And underneath access, I can actually see which individual people have current access to this report. Now, currently myself, because I'm the owner of the report, but also there are other people who have access to the report and they have read and edit permissions because they are members of this workspace. They are my colleagues, my Power BI developers. But please note here at the bottom, we have that individual d.moss, my personal Gmail account, and please don't spam me, but you can see it is there with an invitation. The invitation has not been accepted yet, but it will arrive in my Gmail account. And if I click it and accept it, it will appear that I have read access. The PBI int dev have read access. And if I wish as the owner of this report, I can go to the three dots to the right of their permissions and I can change their permission from read, or I could also, if I wish now, give them read and reshare, or I could completely remove their access. When I remove their access from the report, I also get asked if I wish to remove access to the underlying data set. And yes, I generally, if I don't want someone to see my report, I generally don't want them also to be able to have access to the underlying data set. So the question is, stop sharing report. Do you also want to remove access to any related content? So I'm going to check the box and remove access completely for that group of people. I click cancel and now I have full control who has access and who I've shared this report with. Other ways of sharing the report under the share option are you'll notice you've got an embed report option. And within there, there's three other further options. You can embed into a SharePoint online website, often used within many businesses who use the Office 365 suite of products. They will have SharePoint sites and lists. So you can take the URL and you can embed that inside a SharePoint site if you wish. That would physically embed the report inside the SharePoint site. You can go also share this report through another option, the second option called website or portal. Here, you will also get a further embedding link, one where you wish to embed the report with this first link, and the second link is actually gives you the, um, the iframe, the HTML for an iframe so that you could embed the report inside a website if you know what you're doing with HTML and iframes. Another option to share the report is through what is called publish to web. 
Now, publish to web, you've got to be careful because this is the only point where you are literally, it's called data journalism. It's like publishing a newspaper with your report. You're publishing it to the web. So everyone in the world, whoever can access a browser, they would be able to see your report and your data. So you've got to be sensible about using this option. And in many organizations, you may discover that this has been, option has been removed because it is a potential data leakage and security issue. So some organizations stop that. But if, you, if your organization permits it, because maybe you are into data journalism and your Power BI reports you wish to share, you'll notice you can create an embed code. You get a warning. You are about to create an embed code for this report. Once published, anyone on the internet will be able to access the report. So I'm going to click publish because this report is not private. I have nothing to hide from it. The numbers are a simple test data set. Then you get given a link. You can copy that link into an email. I'm actually going to copy it and I'm going to put it into the chat of this call because now I'm going to put that in the chat and every one of you theoretically can click that link and you will be able to have the experience of consuming a report in a published to web type of environment. Okay. Next option about published to web. One thing I remember, Conrad created, Conrad who's on the call, monitoring the chat for in his curriculum vitae on his LinkedIn profile, he has inside his curriculum links, published to web links of other Power BI reports showing the work that he has done as part of his CV to promote his good work. And it works because then future employers can go on and click the links and see the type of work that you do. And they do not need a Power BI license. They don't need to be shared the report. All they need is access to that URL. Great. Next option, once you have, if you're the end user and receiver of a report that's been shared to you, so your colleague might have shared a report with you, you might say, well, how do I actually see the report? Well, if you're inside Power BI, desk, Power BI service here in the cloud, you could, you would come if you're not sort of a member of the workspace, that's, I'm saying, imagine you're a normal business user and I, as the Power BI developer, shared the report with you. You could see that report by coming into app.powerbi.com and you could go to shared with me, the option one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh option down on the left-hand side called shared with me. Yeah, there, if you click that option, you would then be able to see a list of reports that have been shared with you during your working time at that organization. That is the primary way of sharing reports. There are other ways, but we're not gonna just discuss them today. But just so you're aware, there's a function called workspace apps. And some businesses will share reports, many reports packaged together into these things called apps. Yeah, and we might look at that later, but not just now, because I don't want to confuse you. So that's the process of sharing your reports. What I'm going to do now is go back to the slides. And let's just go on to the next one. Assuming they don't, slides don't crash, which looks like they have done. <laughs> Thankfully, I've got a copy opened in a PDF file. So I'm going to drag that over. And I'm going to go to the next page. Now I'm going to show you how to create a feature called Power BI dashboards. Okay. Now, generally, a dashboard is like the bbc.co.uk homepage. You might have little extracts of stories on the homepage. And when you click that extract, it takes you to the report, the story. So you have reports, which are the underlying pr 
products that we've been creating in Power BI Desktop. And then what you do, you create a dashboard. Let's go and have a look at a dashboard, see what it looks like. Here, I've got one ready-made inside a workspace. Dashboards will have a different icon. Reports have the blue icon and the dashboards have a green icon with a gauge inside it. I'm just gonna open this dashboard and let's have a look at it. So a dashboard inside the Power BI Cloud service, you cannot, let me say, you, in Power, you cannot create dashboards in Power BI Desktop. You only create reports in Power BI Desktop. You publish reports into the cloud and then you create your dashboards in the cloud. So this dashboard has got tiles. These charts are, off, are referred to as tiles. And these tiles originate from each, from different pages of different reports. So basically it's just a shortcut and I click the tile and it takes me to the underlying report. A bit like that Synology example I gave about the BBC website. So imagine this is the home page, and I click this tile and automatically it takes Power BI takes me to the underlying report and it takes me to the page where that tile originated from within that report. And that is the objective of these dashboards. See how that one took me to this page, this report called L4, detailed page. Well, if I go back to the dashboard and I click another tile, let's say this map, watch how it takes me to a different page within that report. It took me to another page. So now let's go and work out how we can create a report. So I'm gonna create a dashboard. I'm gonna show you how to work the tiles. I'm gonna look at the different type of tiles and look at the tile menu options. Let's go over to Power BI in the service and create a dashboard. So to create a dashboard, you first of all have to be inside the workspace where you published your report to. We are in this dev workspace called DA100 2021 10 week dev. And inside there, we have three reports, one from L6, lesson six, one from lesson seven, and another generic report called usage metrics. I'm going to open the L6 report by clicking it. I can see there are multiple um, pages within this report because that is as when we finish lesson six. And what I need to do is simply go to a page on the report and hover, and I mentioned the word hover, hover over any tile, any chart within the report. And you'll see in the top right-hand corner of each chart, there's certain icons that put up, pop up. And the icon you need is the pin. And you click the pin button and it pins the visual to a dashboard. Now, you can create a new dashboard to pin to, or you could even use an existing dashboard. But in this workspace, this is the first dashboard I'm creating. So I'm gonna call it, the um, lesson at seven dashboard and click pin and it pins that tile to the dashboard. You then get a notification in the top right hand corner that it's been pinned and you can click go to the dashboard to actually see the dashboard. Oop, disappeared. Let's pin another item. I'm now gonna go to another page, let's pay, say, Pay, the page L3 managerial. I'm going to pin the tree map and I hover over it and I click pin. And now, because the dashboard exists, it gives me the option to, to pin to the existing dashboard. If there were multiple dashboards, there would be a drop down list here telling me which, and I could select the one I wish to pin to. I then click pin. And once again, I get a notification in the top right hand corner and I click go to dashboard and it takes me to the dashboard. Now, when you have a dashboard, the tiles that you've pinned automatically get stacked up in this, on this page and the tiles appear very large. 
let's go and add another tile to this dashboard from a, another report inside this workspace. I'm going to go back to the workspace. I'm now going to go to the third, the second report called all L7. And for those of you who are alert and watching, you'll already notice that there is the green icon of the dashboard L7 has been created and always is already there. But I'm going to go to the L7 report. I'm going to hover down to the pages and I'm going to pin from the sync slices, from the um, the filter pane of 11, lesson six, I'm going to pin the card that says 103. So I'm going to pin that one and I'm going to pin it to the L7 dashboard. I'm also going to go to the um, edit interactions page and I'm going to pin this map to the dashboard and then I'm going to pin this donut as well to the same dashboard. At this point, I've pinned five tiles. Rather than having to select here on the notifications, I'm going to close those notifications. To navigate to my dashboard, all I need to do is go back to my workspace. And from my workspace, I can select the dashboard, which is the green icon. I can now see that I have a dashboard. I have the scroll vertical panel bar on the right hand side because the tiles will stack up on top of each other to make us a scrollable page. So it can be as long as you wish this page. You can add as many tiles as you want. And what the thing is, though, the tiles are quite big. So what you need to do for each tile, you hover over the tile and you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, right hand corner of each tile, there's like an angle an angle an angle bar and you can drag and make the tiles smaller and as you drag the tiles you'll notice there's a gray background now the tiles you can't just make them any size you want you have to standard you have to resize them to standard sizes that is just to facilitate a more organized table on the dashboard and as you watch i'm just going to make it as wide but I'm just going to make it a little bit short, half the size. And as I scroll up, can you see how the gray disappeared? The gray background disappeared. Now, if I let go of my mouse, it will make that tile that half size. And once again, if I wish to even make it smaller, I could go into the angle bar and make it half the size of that. And you'll watch the gray background disappear as I reduce to the template sizes. So you'll notice it's either a quarter and there's, or there's, there's a four parts to that quarter of the whole, or you can actually make a tile even wider than what it currently is default is. And look here, for example, this bar our chart, this donut, if I wanted to, I could drag it and make it even wider. Yep. So it, you, it's up to you to lay out the chart, the tiles on the page as you wish. The most frustrating thing that you'll come across when you try this is that as you go over the table and try to resize it, you might actually find that you click the tile rather than drag it. And if you do click it, it serves its purpose because it takes you to the underlying report where that tile originated from. But it just means you then have to go back, find your dashboard and drag correctly this time round. So I'm gonna make that table half the size Yep. And I'm going to drag the sales over and to the next to the part, but to the tree map. I'm going to drag the map below the table. I'm going to drag the donut up a little. I'm going to scroll to the right such that I can then configure the donut and make it smaller and make it the width of the charts above so that my tables look lined up. Now, I don't quite like the table in the top left hand corner because you're only seeing the row of Canada and France. So what I could do, I could actually drag that one down a bit, drag this one down a little bit, make this the same size so you can actually see some values. Oops. And as you can see, it starts to get messy. And as you move things around, the other tiles move as well. So you've got so the best advice is work from the top down, rearrange your charts accordingly and never drag one from the bottom, watch how I do this, and I'm going to drag the map 
sorry, they're not the bat, the donut. I'm going to drag the donut and watch how if I drag the donut to the top, watch how everything else is rearranged at the same time. The table's moved down and the map has moved down. So they can be quite figuratively, these dashboards. They serve a great purpose. And the purpose is that the data within these dashboard tiles, the data within your report gets updated regularly. And as the data in your reports get updated, the values get pushed into these tiles. So as the values would change, that sales number one or three million would change as well. The idea is that your business users will come in every morning to their main principal dashboard where they'll get notification about values and any alerts of things that have been changing. And if there's some report, a tile about some report that interests them, the idea is they just come into the chart and click and that point, they will be able to see the report that it's all about. That should help you learn how to set up dashboards. Whilst we're looking at the dashboards, some organizations will actually use these dashboards and in the lobby, in the reception of their offices, and they'll have a Power BI dashboard running on the television, skirt, the television in the, in the reception. And you can use things like um, Google Chrome, Chrome extensions that will then iterate automatically through multiple dashboards and multiple pages of reports. So you can create yourself an interactive live dashboard in your office rooms. I often see, for example, in the IT departments, you have a live dashboard showing the number of tickets or calls that are in progress or the number of calls that are, um, have been accept taken each operator. These are live dashboards with data getting updated all the time, displaying values out from your Power BI reports. Very powerful. Whilst we're here, Let's have a look at the other options in the dashboard menu, just to make sure you're comfortable with all the options that are available within the dashboard menu option. We have our traditional file option where you can save a copy. Sorry, sorry, I need to go to the dashboard, my mistake. Let's go back to the workspace. Let's go back to the dashboard and let's have a look at the menu from the dashboard. We've got our file option where you can save a copy of the dashboard, you can print the page, you can even have some performance inspector options and it'll give you the performance stats about this dashboard. You can look at the settings of the dashboard, you can share even a dashboard. So you don't have to, we, before we talked about sharing a report, the same principles can be applied to about sharing a dashboard. Put the names in, the email addresses, etc and you will then share that dashboard. Please make sure if you share a dashboard with someone that they also have the report shared with them so that they then click the tiles on the dashboard, they will automatically be able to see the contents of the report that they click through when they click the tile on the dashboard. You can now also even, there's integration across Office 365. Microsoft Power BI works in bed with the Office 365 family. And we are all, a lot of organizations will use Microsoft Teams. Teams is like a, a chat, a video conferencing software, a bit like this Zoom we're, we're currently using. So you can even click and chat in Teams. And what that will do, it will give you the opportunity to take this report into Teams where you can have a conversation about the report or the dashboard in this instance. You can add a comment to a dashboard. So you can click the comments and you can start typing comments saying great dashboard or you could even say hey what are those numbers are about and that will get posted so that anyone who comes to this dashboard would see the, tr the chat on the right hand side you can subscribe to a dashboard a lot of individuals will do that because they don't they don't quite have that routine of going to power bi every morning to see the contents of the dashboards and they live inside their inboxes in their email inbox so what you can do, you can subscribe to a dashboard, you can add a new subscription, and you can then include your email address or your boss's email address and it's subscribed for them. And you can determine what frequency they get a copy of that dashboard. And you can do the same with reports, but you get a frequency that they will receive that dashboard. Um, and they get basically an email coming into their email box at that specific time. And then 
within that email, they can click the link and it will bring them to this dashboard. The other things you can do, you can edit dashboards. So not only do you pin tiles from reports to dashboards, but you can add other type of tiles to dashboards. And the other type of tiles that exist are ones that are called web content. So you can add a web content. You could even, for example, you could pick up the content from an embedding of a HTML tags or an iframe type of tags, and you could embed the code and it would embed that inside your dashboard. Not only can you add web content tags, you can add images, or you can add just normal standard text. You can add YouTube videos as well. Yep, if you've got any YouTube video, yep, you can just type the URL of your YouTube video and you can add that to your dashboard. Whilst we're talking about YouTube, let's grab the opportunity to go over to YouTube and make sure that you all are fully aware that we do have the Waterbyte channel and at Waterbyte, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and see all the different um, re recordings of the different sessions that we've been doing. There are playlists here, and this playlist has now got 13 um, re video recordings in there where it's got information about all lesson one, lesson two, and all the historic lessons that you might have missed if you've just landed on this recording on YouTube. And if you have, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Here are the videos. For example, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open that first video that talks to us about the DA100 examination that hopefully you're all getting ready for. I'm gonna go and pick up the um, URL, um, which should be here. I'm gonna, so is that the URL? Let me just click that URL. I don't think I need the index one, do I? Let me just click that URL. C control and C, go back to our Power BI dashboard where I was adding the video tile. I'm gonna put the URL in and I'm gonna click apply. And then we should be able to get, oops, we should be able to get an icon showing that video in YouTube on our dashboard. So I could have a dashboard there live and I could run that YouTube video from the tile on my dashboard. It gets exciting. What more do you want? There are other tiles you could add. There are tiles that are also called real-time tiles. And real-time tiles are all about a concept of streaming data. They are called live data. And you can add um, tiles from different streaming data sets. You might think in the world of streaming, you might think of IO sensors. Maybe you run a factory. I was just doing some work for Lego and they've got Power BI, they've got sensors in the production line and we're extracting data off the sensors and streaming them into live dashboards. And the dashboards are inside the manufacturing plant where people are controlling the temperatures and the humidity and the measurements from sensors of different production statistics, all live inside Power BI dashboards. They're great, make sure you use them. There are some other features within the dashboards that you can use. The most, one of the best ones is you can see um, usage statistics about reports, but we'll just go and have a look at that in another later when we proceed. Let's go back to the presentation. We've been looked at dashboards. I'm just gonna go through to the next slide. I'm now gonna show you some more features in Power BI service about how you can actually edit a report, a Power BI report, you can actually edit it also in the Power BI service. So let's go and have a look at those features in the Power BI service. I'm gonna go back to the Power BI cloud. We finished with the dashboards. I'm gonna go into the workspace. I'm gonna open up the report that I uploaded before called L7. And not only can I look at the report, I'm just gonna minimize on the left that menu because it's occupying a bit of space by clicking the hamburger, triple burger. I'm just gonna, and there, let's have a look. Let's click one of the pages. Let's click the ed, L6 edit interactions page. So we've actually got some visuals in front of us. Here I'm consuming the report in the workspace, but if you have edit permissions, be it you are a member of the workspace or you've been given edit permissions, you can, 
from a report, go over to the menu and you can click edit and watch what happens. When you click edit inside the Power BI service, you get what I would call a light version of Power BI Desktop. This is Power BI Desktop in the cloud, editing a report that maybe my colleague has published into the cloud, or I just want to make a quick fix to without the hassle of going into Power BI Desktop. So I clicked edit, and you will see across the menu, we have a series of features similar to what exists in Power BI Desktop. Yep. We first of all, the most principal thing is on the right hand side, you can see you've got the fields panel where you can add pages to your report and add extra visuals. And you've got the visualizations panel. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add a page to the report. I'm going to rename the page. I'm in the cloud. I'm not in Power BI Desktop. I'm calling the page L7. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to call this cloud page because we made it in the cloud. I'm going to go there. I'm just going to open up my financials data. I'm going to click the sales and I'm going to turn it into a donut and I'm going to show sales by segment. I believe we go down, we have the segment and I've created a chart on a page within the Power BI service. I can add to that page, let's say a text box and I can just type some text, this report created in the Power BI cloud service. Yep, a small text I know, so I'm gonna highlight it all and I'm gonna change the size from 10 to 18. So hopefully you can see that. This report, I repeat, is being created in the cloud. So when I have finished creating that report, what I need to do is save it. And what I do, I can come into the file and I can save, which would save over the existing copy or I could save as. So I'm gonna save as lesson seven, executive summary V2, because it's the second version. And I save that. So now when I go into the workspace and I look at the number of reports in the workspace, please observe, not only do I have version one, but I now have a new report called version two. And it's that report there that we just created and saved in the, in the, in the Power BI service. I'm just gonna go back to edit to show you some other features within the edit menu. You've got some standard Power BI desktop features, but not a great amount. Yeah, you can add shapes, you can add buttons, you can have some visual interactions, you can duplicate the page, you can basically just do simple stuff, not super advanced stuff. You can't create measures, you can't create calculated columns, you can't do other things. So just you are restricted. But the way if you wish to exit without saving would be to simply select reading view and it will take you back to reading view as opposed to this current edit view. But let's go and have a look at the file menu. There's some interesting options there. Once again, you could embed, embed to SharePoint, you can publish to web, you can even export this file to PowerPoint or to PDF. And if you wanted to, you could even grab a copy, download the copy of this report as a .pbix, that is a Power BI desktop file, and you could download it and then you could open it in Power BI desktop and do some more advanced editing to the report. Let's go back to the presentation. I believe I worked through the menu options and we saved the file as. Let's go to the next page. Here, I've got last 10 minutes to talk to you about mobile reports. Now, I have got here my mobile phone. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna plug it in to my screen. How I'm gonna do that, I use an app on my laptop called Visor. And what it does, it's an app that helps you display devices that you plug into your computer. And on my device, my mobile, Android, I'm an Android fan, so I'm just gonna plug him in, if you can see, I'm just gonna plug it in. And when I plug it in, 
It just checks a few things and hopefully we'll give it two seconds to check. I'm going to also, I'm going to down, I go to the visor application that's running on my laptop and I click the play button and hopefully all going well, you can now see my mobile phone. Yep, yeah, we can see it. Fantastic. Thank you, Conrad. On my mobile phone, I'm just going to move, minimize the other objects, the other browsers on the screen so that you can actually only see the mobile phone. OK, good. So now you can see the mobile phone in the bottom right hand corner. You can look at the video or you can look at the screen in the bottom right hand corner. I've got I'm going to click this Power BI. Yep. So you can see it happening on my phone is happening on the screen. And I just got it. This is the Power BI app, which is a mobile app. And you can get the mobile app for not only your um, Android, but um, your Play from the Play Store, from the iStore and um, all the other stores. How many other stores are there? So I'm just trying to log in whilst I'm talking. Sorry. Let me log in. Give it two seconds. I'm logging into the app. Hi, David Moss. Continue. Next. Next. And let's go. I'm now inside the mobile app. What you're seeing on the screen, I'm seeing on my mobile phone. And here we have a complete experience that is not a web browser, it's a mobile app. And we can go and see my most frequent, most recent reports. I could scroll across. Yep. And let's have a look at the most recent one. Was that L7 Executive V2? Can you see how it's got a purple icon? Because it has been optimized for the Power BI mobile app. You can try the multi-select mode. They're always deploying new features into the mobile app. I'm just going to turn it on. And you'll notice that certain pages in my report are optimized for mobile, but others aren't. And the ones that aren't, I have to move physically my phone to landscape. And when I move it to landscape, I can now actually see the report that we just created. Can you see that? This report is creating the Power BI cloud service. That's the report we created. And just to the left of the name of the report, yep, I move my mouse so you can see what I'm talking about, but I'm now going to use my finger on my mobile phone. And I can click the drop down arrow and I can scroll through and I can see all the pages, all the pages of that, of that report. So I'm just going to go to the last page where the report that we created is. I'm just going to go to the page before that. I think there was one called Edit Interactions. Let me just go to that one. Ooh, sorry, I've got a page that's formatted for mobile. It was called ah, Bookmarks. We did it last week. So Bookmarks, I don't have to show horizontally. I can actually show it in its vertical format because it's created and optimized for mobile. And it's got a button on there that says Show a Column Chart. I'm going to click Close show, show the Column Chart. It shows me the Column Chart. And when I click show donut, it shows me the donut. But these are pretty cool because you can go into these visuals. And when you look at the visuals, you can actually interact with the visuals. Let me just find a visual two seconds that I can interact with. Let me go back. Let's go to the page that we were looking at before called edit interactions. Let's turn it round on the side. Let's find that donut. I'm going to select that donut. Go on donut. Select, oh, it's frozen. Come on, don't do this to me. All right, what we need to do, we need to optimize the report for Power BI Desktop. Let's go over. I'm going to leave the mobile phone there. Let's go and look at the slides. The idea is to show you how to optimize a report so that you can see it on the mobile app. So how are we going to do that? We have two options of doing that. We could either do it in the original Power BI Desktop file or we could do something similar in the Power BI service once we've published the file. And the way we need to do that, if we're in Power BI Desktop, we go to the View menu and we go to the mobile layout. So let's go and do that. Let's go to the Power BI Desktop report. I'm in this page called um, L6 um, Edit Interactions page. OK, remember that L6 Edit Interactions page. And to make that page mobile friendly, what I need to do is I go to the view option. I go to the mobile layout from the ribbon 
And within the mobile layout, I am now have what is appears on the screen, a blank mobile phone layout. And all the tiles or charts that were in that page are, land, are on the right hand side. And literally, you can just drag them on to your mobile phone and how you would like them to lay out on the phone. If you don't like the size, you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, you can lay them out exactly how you wish. But what you're doing, you're making that report ready such that it can be consumed on a mobile phone. You just lay them out nicely. I'm going to put the title on the page. Let's try and get the title in there. Oops, oh, it's getting messy. I'm going to get the title in there. If it fits, if it fits, I don't know. Let me see if it fits. And if it doesn't, I'll move it down and drag everything down. And you lay out your mobile report. Now, what you can do, you've got a vertical scroll bar, so you can obviously go down. I'm going to squeeze a few report tiles next to each other. You can make them small and let's see what it looks like. OK, you don't have to have every tile. And at any point in time, if you don't want to add a tile, it just stays there on the right hand side. If you want to delete all your good work of adding tiles to the mobile phone at any point, you could go and click the delete button and it would delete and remove the tiles from the mobile view. It wouldn't remove the tiles from your page, just from this mobile view. At any point in time, you're going to re deselect the mobile layout icon on the ribbon, and it takes you back to the original report view, which is the desktop view, or you can click mobile layout, and it takes you back to the layout that you have prepared. This is page L6. Remember, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the desktop view. I'm going to click the home menu. I'm going to publish this report. And now, hopefully, when we go back to the mobile, sorry, I've published the report. Um, I'm going to publish. What's happened? Did I publish it? Yep, OK. It's just stalled two seconds occasionally. I do have um, so many things running on the laptop. It, it slows down. But give it 10 seconds. This report will be published into the Power BI service. When it's in the Power BI service, it's in the cloud and living in the cloud. So what I'm then going to do, I'm going to refresh the mobile app. And refreshing the mobile app, it will hopefully then make this page L6 mobile friendly such that I can scroll up and down. Now, my computer's kind of frozen for a second. And hopefully, you can hear me and see that. Ah, we seem to have got a bit of life. Good, 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 good. These things do happen. Don't last thing, best thing, worst thing you can do is panic. And the best thing you can do is just literally wait for a second. Can you see how now when I upset, upload this Power BI desktop report, it's alerting me that it's going to replace the data set and it may impact two reports and one dashboard. The two reports, remember, there's this original L7 version one, there was version two, and there was also the dashboard that we had created. So they all have a dependency on that original master Power BI desktop file. I'm going to publish it. I'm overwriting that. None of the other reports will change. They just have a dependency on what I was republishing it to. And when we go to the cloud, I'm going to emphasize and show you that dependency through a feature called Lineage. So I'm going to go. Now the published report has been published. I'm going to go back into Power BI desktop in the cloud. I'm all good instances. I'm just going to do a browser refresh to make sure that my latest publications have been ingested. I did say to you I was going to go and show you the concept of lineage. So watch this. I'm going to go to this report, L7 version 2. I'm going to click the three dots. And you'll see there's a feature called view lineage. And the lineage will tell me the dependency of this report, yeah? So this report L2 is dependent on the um, data set of version one, which in its own turn has a dependency on three data sources. And you start to get an idea of lineage. Look at this dashboard, the L7 dashboard that we created. Not only does it have tiles from the version one file and the version two file, which both have a depend different dependencies. So you get an idea of how the reports are stacked up. To close the presentation, I'm going to go back into the, um, the 
Power BI report. I'm going to go into my mobile that's called, which one is it? Version one. And, I'm, and there it is. Fantastic. I'm on that page, edit interactions, spot on the tower as the demo comes to the end. You can see I'm inside the mobile app using my finger, moving the report. I'm going to go and click one of the report icons. I'm going to go back, go to the dashboard this time, click the dashboard and click the tile on the dashboard. And look at this, I can even interact with the donut. Oops, I've got a notification through YouTube. <laughs> Wrong thing, type of message you don't want on a live demo. And look at this, I can even move. Come on. Oh, you're meant to be able to move, spin that. Why's that spinning? Oh, there it is, it's starting to spin. Yep, you can select a segment and it'll spin. You can annotate. Yeah, you can even say, fantastic. And then I could share it and send it to someone. What more do you want? A mobile app for Power BI. Not only is it a fantastic platform for creating reports and sharing reports, but you also have a full mobile platform where you can configure. I did it in the desktop. You could have done the exact same thing in the service. You will have noticed that when you, I'm, I'm running over slightly over time, but you will have noticed that when you're in the service, when you're inside a report, there was an option to edit the report. And when you edited the report, there is the option to do the mobile layout. And you can create the same effect in the Power BI service in the cloud. I'm just going to look at the next slide, see where we're up to. We were, if there had been time, I would have gone through some more features in the Power BI service and how you can interact with the reports. But please use your own good common sense. Go into the Power BI, go into the desktop, go and open a report and work through the menu features scrolling across the top. See what you can do. There's some great features there. We might go through them next week. You can, okay. And then the next slide, come to the end. We're going to talk to you about the session at nine o'clock this evening. We Every time we have an hour's training session on the Monday from five till six, we do a session at nine o'clock called the Q&A session. That's on at nine o'clock. There will be a video shared showing what coursework I want you to do. The coursework is always go to this Microsoft Learn, the DA100 examination. You'll see there's a module, a learning path called Visualize Data in Power BI. Please make sure you do the module called Create Dashboards in Power BI. And if you're keen and super keen whilst you're there, there is another module called Create Paginated Reports for anyone who's interested. Please do that, These at least the Create Dashboards in Power BI module to keep up to date. Oops, two seconds. Remember, we're learning and practicing for this DA100 certification. Keep up to date, get ready. You'll be, hopefully, with Easter holiday, you'll have time to revise and you could be sitting that exam after Easter. We're out there on LinkedIn, social media. We're on YouTube, we're on LinkedIn. Reach out and connect with us. Go to the YouTube channel to watch the videos and where you'll see the homework, the coursework later tonight, I'll upload with that video. We have the session at nine o'clock this evening. You can register for that session on Meetup, just like you registered for this session. Come along, ask us any questions you have. Next week, 8th of March, same time, we're gonna be digging into doing some simple DAX with some KPIs that will help us create some informative Power BI visuals Come along, register, and hopefully, all going well, we'll be creating charts like you can see on the right-hand side. It's next Monday at 8 o'clock. I hope you enjoyed the session.